This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring former FBI special agent and chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program, Robin Dreek. Trial of Karen Reed, it continues on and there's more confusion every single time we talk about it because who's telling the truth? What happened? What expert witness is really an expert? <laughs> it's coming down to that. Joining me to discuss, Robin Drake, retired FBI special agent, chief of the counterintelligence behavioral analysis program with the FBI. Uh, Robin, again, another week in here, more testimony. We've had some you know, folks who weren't the most well-versed of being an expert on the stand. Uh, and we've had some other experts uh, come in and, and testify outside of the jury. Uh, again, contradicting what other experts are saying. What's your thoughts and where we're going this far? Continuing down the same road of doubt, 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 doubt. There's yeah. lots of doubt on all the charges that the prosecution has brought forward. I think it's even more solid every single day. Um, I, I think also going through the text messages that she was um, that they showed in court uh, that she was sending between her and John, like the day of the, the night before and, and things like that really show a little more depth to that relationship and how kind of toxic it was. Mm -hmm. But again, that doesn't mean that you were um, con contriving to kill your boyfriend or ex-boyfriend or whatever yeah. he was at that moment. But I think it was also very telling and very good for defense because she was texting about the kids. I still have your kids here. I still have your kids here. You know, so in her mind, she had no idea what had transpired, mm -hmm. which again, keep keep showing that the the charge against her that prosecution has brought forward is not an accurate charge, not a good charge at all. No, it, it, it's not. I, I completely agree with that. Uh, looking at uh, some of the evidence that's come to light, or at least the interpretations of it from the experts, so to speak, um, it makes me understand a little bit more maybe why they went with the murder charge, but still, I, I feel like it's still overstepping. Yeah, well, it seems to be why that group of people would go with the murder charge. Yeah. It's easy to see, you know, again, this is like watching a soap opera, yeah. is, is these texts, a, a very sad one and a tragic one. But here's a group of people and a group of friends of John O'Keefe's who didn't like her, mm -hmm. didn't think that she was good in his life. And so on a on an impulse, someone hears or has an overhear of maybe she said, I did it, I did it. And so let's jump on that and throw her under the bus because we don't like her. So it's so easy to yeah. kind of see this this arc going in that direction to the degree of conspired to, you know, actually kill him. No, to yeah. and actually on that on going against the fence, too. You know, this is a, a big conspiracy theory. I mean, a conspiracy between them all to to get her. I think it was I think I still get the 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 gut impulse on this is it was opportunistic yeah to oh. you know it's you know they saw an opportunity to jump on a few statements that i think as we're seeing were maybe said third party over here's i mean so there's a lot of muddledness because of all the alcohol that was going on um and so all we really have on those statements as well as from the um you know the very credible witnesses of the uh, first responders that came for john o'keefe so we'll see uh, again it's just more of the same uh, Trooper Paul was uh, on the stand uh, earlier this week uh, trying to get through his testimony. I, I felt bad for him. It was like, this is a guy who clearly not well-versed in public speaking, probably has some anxiety issues is my guess, but doesn't necessarily mean that his testimony is invalid or anything of that nature. Let's take a listen to uh, some of uh, his testimony uh, when he was on a cross uh, talking about uh, no broken bones some talk about the arm and we'll talk on the other side. Did you account for the fact that his arm is on a hinge? It's what? Say again. Did you account for the fact in this scenario that you just told the jurors that his arm is on a hinge? On a on hinge. Shoulder? Okay. okay. So, your arm got hit. Didn't his arm just swing? I said arm and shoulder area, so his arm could have been considered part of it. Even if his shoulder got the upper, okay. you're pointing to his upper biceps. Mm -hmm. Right? There's no injuries on his shoulder, not a single one, not even a bruise, right? Like I said, it looked, it looked like to me it was from up from up here. I don't know how far I can up back here, but it was up here. Well, so. you're the one that, that talked about his injuries on his arm. Yes. That's limited to about mid biceps, to about mid forearm, correct? Okay. Right? Yes. No injuries on the shoulder, no injuries on the torso. 
No injuries on the ribs, no injuries on the back, correct? Is that right? Yes. So your theory is, if you got hit on the arm, took the brunt of the force from the tail light on the arm, stayed with the, the vehicle long enough for the tail light to explode, basically, to shatter. Then these striations get on his arm, abrasions. Does a pirouette, a spin, <laughs> counterclockwise, and flies 30 feet in the air to his point of rest. Yeah, it happens probably a little faster than that, though. I thought you said he hit his head on the curb. I said that's one of the possibilities of <clears throat> when you look at the roadway, as he gets spun around kind of clockwise, it's a possibility that the curb is there, any blunt force object on the ground, as the ground is pretty blunt. Well, except in your scenario that you just told us, he flew through the air onto the light dusting of snow, grass, and dirt. I didn't say through the air. Say that again? I didn't say he went, got flown, thrown through the air. Okay, I'll use your word, he got projected. Like projected, project, projected doesn't mean, it's not incorporating just the throw. Projected just means you get pushed forward. There's a, two parts of that, there's the air, then there's the, the ground, like I said earlier, the tumbling, the rolling, whatever, that part of the crash would happen. Projecting is just what we call what happens to a pedestrian post-impact with a crash. Okay, so <coughs> a couple of questions. If his arm, elbow, took the brunt of that entire impact, how do you account for the fact that he didn't suffer a broken bone? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing is, there is a lot of I don't knows with something like this. You can be, we don't know how he was positioned when he was hit, if he was hit. Um, and if you're drunk and you got your drink in your hand and it's starting to snow, who knows? And if, and if you're not expecting a vehicle to go into you, you could be hit in any way, shape or form. Trying to reconstruct that, I guess, accurately with the lack of the investigation that actually took place at that scene. It's got to be like almost impossible at this point. I want this defense attorney if I ever do anything wrong. Yeah, no kidding. So here's what really came to light just listening to that. I thought was so good when describing the scene was how did that light get broken by backing into John O'Keefe if he's a soft bulk of tissue without being against a hard surface? In other words, when 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 the supposed accident happened, there would have to be enough force against that light to crack that bulb. And I mean, and so he, everyone listening, go out and, and and knock on your your tail light a bit. That is a hard piece of plastic. It's very hard to crack, damage, and shatter outside of hitting a wall, outside of hitting something. And if you're going to hit a body um, that's not against another surface, you know, so in mm -hmm. other words, it's going to give, give to the, give to the, the extent that there's not even a broken bone. That's a really fair point. That's a great point. Um, I hadn't thought about that before, but he sows a lot of doubt in there, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt, without a doubt, he Fantastic. sows a lot of doubt. Sick of the ads? We opt to. Start listening with no commercials now and get access to all of our episodes in advance of everyone else. Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to our podcast page and sign up now. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Sign up now.